Okay, this is going to be a very quick lesson or video rather on the the Maggio technique. Um, I've started using this a lot more recently, um, more so towards the end of last year, where I had a little bit of instruction by the fantastic Mike Lovett on it. Um, it's ideal for really having a nice, supportive, consistent embouchure. Um, I myself play with some. I suppose old dental injuries. I have scar tissue and just various various things that potentially could hinder the way the way I play trumpet. Um, I had looked for a technique. I was aware of the manual technique, but I hadn't really had much instruction on it. So um, I went to Mike, and he opened the door on this for me. Really, um, and I, I, it really has helped my playing no end. I've been doing various bits of it, but to have some of the aspects of it explained clearly by fantastic position that Mike was, was was a real eye opener. Um and I started using this with a lot of you guys, a lot of my students. So this is a little bit more of a, an in depth way of going through it, um talking about um the benefits of it. But we'll try and keep it short, probably around about ten minutes. A little note on I don't know if you have the document or not, um I'm sure I forward it to most of you. Um, and if you're not one of my students and you're watching this on the channel anyway, it's out there. Um, I think it's free domain anyway. You, you, you can you can buy it, but there's loads of PDFs around of the technique. And when you look at warm up A, there's five points, and it says about the mouthpiece being played, being placed two thirds upper and one third lower. Doesn't really work for me that in terms of like the mouthpiece setting. I'm very much more about a natural comfortable setting and unless there is a real issue with where the mouthpiece resides on the face then I generally won't move the mouthpiece towards a two thirds one third lower setting for me the mouthpiece setting is very much about using the mm syllable placing the mouthpiece on seeing when it feels comfortable the second point the top of warm up A it says corners of the mouth into eye teeth as if to whistle and that for me is one of the gold aspects of it. It really, really, really is. When I lose sight or forget or start to have planes, I think, am I, am I doing this? And and it literally is. Like, if you think about the eye teeth there and where the embouchure comes into the side, that's kind of almost, this centre part here is almost where our mouthpiece resides. And when you have this area here nice and touching together, it's almost like you've got a kind of like, You've got you've got your grip either side of the mouthpiece ready to go, and for me as I start to ascend, it's almost like everything just tightens down a little bit more. Okay, and this area in the centre is still nice and free to do its job and respond to the airstream and the compression. And as I'm going lower or I'm playing into pedal register, you know, so everything's just kind of like loosening up a little bit there. And that's like the best way that I can describe how my playing feels when I'm playing throughout the register. Um and the third one lips together and, and this is this falls on really really nicely in terms of when we have the corners of our lips engaged properly so the corners are not just here and then they come into the eye teeth area you can put your fingers over it when we play this is kind of what happens we go there's no buzzing you know even putting a mouthpiece on the chops And if any of you are familiar with the William Adam lead pipe buzz, it's pretty much the same thing, but Mike showed me a fantastic thing. I'm hoping to make showing this, Mike. Um, but if we buzz or play, sorry, blow through the mouthpiece, and then we engage the mouthpiece into the lead pipe, that's where the buzz happens. It's actually to do with how all the air works, etc. Um, coming back towards the embouchure to create the buzz it's where the buzz comes from. So as you see, until the mouthpiece is actually engaged into the lead pipe, there's no buzz happening. So that's kind of where Maggio's saying lips together. I know there's a whole skill out there regarding buzzing off and on the mouthpiece. Um, that's a whole different ballpark. If you want to go and study that, I've not looked into that yet. For me, generally, it leaves me feeling quite tight. And I haven't gone over that in my lessons with you because I don't have the information on it. And like I said, it doesn't work for me. Anyway, getting off topic. So back on to the Maggio. 
And the next thing he says is, uh, bottom lip slightly underneath, behind the top lip. I don't agree with that. And the uh, fifth one, buzz down. So by this, what he's saying is, where you're tucked slightly back. Now as we play higher and lower, there is some slight jaw position movements, etc. It's all the tongue, everything's all linked in. I don't believe that bottom lip slightly underneath behind the top lip really, really works. Okay, that's I'm not going to go into it because I don't believe it works for me. And the buzz down thing obviously relates directly to point four. And for me, again, I stay away from that. I don't feel that it works. I don't feel that's how I play. I feel, in fact, that my lips are entirely like parallel with a nice space in the middle there to let the embouchure respond to the airstream. So... Moving quickly into the actual warm-up itself, we start on a C. So I usually have done lip flapping, done a little bit of buzzing on the lead pipe as demonstrated there. Uh, a few other things relating to the lead pipe and maybe some note bending. We've, we've gone over most of this in our lessons. Um, and when we do warm-up A, Maggio has already started to employ like a kind of a syllable or a vowel sound to to think about when we're playing. So that's starting with ta and continue the ah through the process. So we get a nice clean full sound all the way through. I'm a big believer in using the tuner as you go through this. Metronome not so much, but just think of it a nice, a nice consistent pace through everything. Um, by all means, use a metronome. It does help engage the air system and tongue and moving through the register, etc. And that fullness of sound is something to continue and carry all the way down to our pedal C. So we'll not do the full exercise all the way down to pedal C. We'll just do some hit points all the way down. One thing I do try and always make sure is, no matter what it is I'm practicing, so that I carry it into my playing, is that the first note, the attack in the first note, is always clean and clear and that maintains all the way through these notes are slurred all the way down as well so next we go down to let's go down to the g again nice and free not blowing hard at all there's barely any air going into the instrument in terms of thinking of blowing we're trying to just think about that nice resonant full sound so we're not far away from hitting our first pedal note, which is our F. We'll do that one now. Now, the aim of the pedal notes is to try and get this nice, full sound. The pedal note, off the range, it's not really a note. If you want to think about it as anything, it's really, really close to how we play our bent notes. So when we're doing our note bending... It's that type of feeling when we're in the bent range of the, the note bending exercise that we're kind of manipulating down into the, the pedal range. The thing about the pedal range is it should force us or allow us, we should try and think about this ah sound this, or ah oh sound to really have the nice full feeling all the way around here. Tongue nice and flat in our mouth. And almost sure relaxed and maybe even a little bit, just, just puffy feeling is the best way that I can describe it. So having trouble getting down to that first pedal F, make sure that the F sharp just above it is there. And you can bend down from that F sharp. And once you're starting to get that happening nice and consistently, you know, lift the vowels up, lift the, the, the three vowels up and just come into your first vowel. Ugh. Focus and getting that pedal note really, 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 really nice and full. So, moving on, we might as well go down to our E. Same deal again, just trying to think of keeping the throat nice and open and the tongue nice and flat and the the range of the of, of, of the bent E kind of feeling just, just going on there. So it's, you're feeling that kind of bent thing going on with the pedal E and just trying to get it to really, really resonate. 
Um, so maybe we'll just go on to the pedal C now. <laughs> That there is one of the most challenging pedal notes that we can get. So first of all, we can try and do what we did with the descending F sharp down to the pedal F. We can do the C down to a pedal C, but play the pedal C on all three. This opens up the full instrument and makes essentially the slot a little bit bigger for us to aim to. And once we get that pedal C sharp happening, open up the valves or lift the valves up and see where our pedal C is. It might come out really flat as an A or a, or a B flat actually underneath it. But if that's happening, you're kind of in the right zone and you want to try and support that by just having a nice supple, loose, but still focused on brochure on our pedal note, whichever one comes out, and gradually steering it towards our pedal C. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> So you heard it kind of pop down there to kind of like a B flat, B area. And that's where you can start to experiment with just supporting that and just steering it up a little bit towards the pedal. So you can do this with a little tongue control or even just a little bit of support air air down here. Don't think about that when we're playing low, but we still have to support notes and make sure that they're in the right area. So that's pretty much warm up A um, in a nutshell taken care of. Um, next we'll move on to exercise one.